the very first episode of the Further Tunes podcast. I'm your host, Wyatt Bannum, and I'll be joined weekly by the boys Liam MacArthur and Gianmarco Lamana. How's it going, guys? What's going on, guys? On Further Tunes, our primary focus is music. Ever since high school, we always found ourselves heavily discussing music more than anything else. And we have similar tastes, but our differing opinions on specific artists and albums can result in some heated debates and some hilarious discussions. Like I said, we met in high school, so for about five or six years now, I'd say, we've been shit-talking each other's music tastes. <laughs> gets pretty heated. Liam, uh, didn't we talk about doing a podcast or YouTube channel or some shit back in grade 11? Oh, yeah, we've talked about this uh, from grade 11 to now, and I'd say it's about time. Yeah, like, we were dumb fucks back then, but we always found our conversations taking interesting turns, and I think our discussions and our roasts, we can kind of find new ways to look at some music whether it was a point someone made in a discussion or you know what i mean so uh, i think this podcast was a solid idea for us to get our shit talking out into the public and let the people hear uh we just feel the need to say that the opinions discussed in this show are merely just opinions right we all have them so don't get your panties in a twist if you hear something you don't like uh, let us know. We'd love to hear any and all feedback about the topics or opinions discussed in the show. You can follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Ferda Tunes with a Z. There you can harass us and tell us how wrong we are. So, since hip-hop is one of the most interesting genres out there and probably our most personal favorite, we'll be focusing mainly on hip-hop, pop, R&B type of stuff, but uh, we'll never miss a major release in another genre. I personally try to listen to everything we have available on this fucking planet. So if we're interested in it and it's popping, we'll cover it. I feel all of our music tastes have gotten a lot more versatile over the last two years. I think we'd all agree. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But uh, as we get into that, I'll shut up for a minute and let the boys introduce themselves so you can get a taste of what we like and what we listen to on the regular and shit like that. So Liam, what's up, bro? How's it going, guys? My name's Liam. I've just graduated from sport management. I am very passionate about music and sports. Sport was my first real passion, and then I slowly transitioned into music. I listen to all types of music, but my main um, genres have to be hip-hop, EDM, and of course, a little bit of classic rock in there. Uh, favorite hip-hop artist right now, uh, Gotta be Kendrick Lamar, Notorious B.I.G., Kanye West, and Travis Scott. I first started really getting into music when I, when I was in my football playing days. Um, all like all the players in the dressing room would play these these hype rap artists. I'm like, yo, who is, who are these guys? Who are they? Turned out to be just Migos. <laughs> uh, so so it wasn't a hype. But uh, anyways. I did research some new artists, got into some new tastes, and my passion carried to who I am today. Uh, that's my story. My favorite albums as of right now, Gotta Be Ready to Die, College Dropout, mm. Rodeo, 36 Chambers, and many more I will discuss uh, throughout this podcast. John Marco, what's good, man? What's going on, guys? My name is John Marco. Uh, I'm a fourth year university student. Um, I listen to almost every genre of music, like Wyatt said. Uh, because hip hop's our main uh, genre that we cover, some of my favorite hip hop artists are Kendrick, The Weeknd, uh, Travis Scott. Um, but I also really like '60s and '80s rock, like classic rock as well. Um, and not just music, but we'll cover other stuff like sports. The, the Raptors are in the finals right now. It's an exciting time to live in Toronto. Yeah, baby. <laughs> Fuck yeah. So uh, we're also going to be covering stuff like sports as well. We we're in the major sports. Soccer, hockey, basketball, stuff like that. Uh, and some of my favorite albums, Good Kid, Mad City by Kendrick, The Chronic, uh, 1984, Van Halen, Hotel California, The Eagles, stuff like that. Sure, so uh, my name's Wyatt Bannum. I'm a journalism student starting my second year, and I'm very passionate discussing all kinds of music. Over the last few years, I've been really dedicated to discovering new music across various genres, and I like to think I'm pretty knowledgeable in a wide range of music. I don't want to toot my own horn, but uh, my three favorite genres got to be hip-hop, rock, and electronic music, just to be vague. Uh, my list of albums I want to listen to grows and shrinks nearly every day. Uh, music is like kind of the only thing I really care about. 
Yeah, I'm just really obsessed with the shit. I kind of studied hip hop in high school, and uh, some of my favorite rappers go Kanye West, Kendrick Lamar, Lil Wayne, Freddie Gibbs, Earl Sweatshirt, and MF Doom. I also really enjoy bands like Radiohead, New Order, Pink Floyd, Beatles, Led Zeppelin, you know, the classics. It fucks with David Bowie, Elton John, like Beach Boys heavy. For electronic, I love Daft Punk, Aphex Twin, Odessa, Jamie, and the XX. We'll get into albums and classic albums as the episodes go on, but that's a bit of what I listen to. So for each episode, at the start, we'll probably just get into the most recent relevant news, what we each think is our best new release of the week, and we'll do like a classic of the week type of thing, typical stuff you'd get with a music show. And uh, we have our Prove Me Wrong segment, and we'll be doing our Top 10 segment pretty much every week. We got our uh, Top 10 Rappers of All Time, starting it off hella strong. That's definitely going to get heated. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Getting excited for that one. So, getting into recent news, just starting June 2019, Future just dropped a new little EP, what is it, seven songs, about 20 minutes, called Save Me. I heard it once, I'm definitely going to have to listen to it a few more times. <laughs> yeah, same. Um, I'm usually really onto Future, and I'm into pretty much everything he does, even like Hendrix I was really onto, that was a bit bit of a weird release for some people but um this one the vocals sound very interesting pretty out there yeah but it's definitely without a doubt it's an emotional album and a very personal album he's diving into some deep topics so uh, i think that'll help help the album grow on me for sure because i wasn't feeling the vocals crazy the first listen again i've only heard it once what are you guys thinking yeah, like, I mean, this is very different from Future's other other shit. Um, like, Purple Rain, uh, Dirty Sprite 2. Oh, yeah. All classic Future albums. All had some hype, like, hype tracks, hype trap beats, yeah, whatever. Yeah, he, he always has that flavor to his albums. That's just bang, trap bangers type of thing. But Yeah, 100%. And, and this album, to me, just seemed out, like, seemed like a cry for help basically and i was gonna say that too, um, yeah. like the the drugs he has done in the past have obviously caught up to him and you can feel it in this album that it's really damaged him in a way and getting to his brain um mm -hmm. but like i said it was it was a dope switch up for him and i think uh I hope he doesn't stay on this trend of dropping albums like this for his career, but it was definitely a new sound for him that I was kind of into. The vocals, like you said, were very different. I, I had only listened to it once, but yeah, it was very it was a very dark rap album and something very new for future. For sure. And I think it's a lot of thing that a lot of artists go through, such as like even like Danny Brown and Mac Miller have some like very like even just some even if they're just some yeah. songs yeah, that for are sure. very like cry for help type of vibes that you get. And like when an artist like like even when Danny Brown released Atrocity Exhibition, a lot of people were saying like yo, like you sound like you're like you're gonna die or something. Like you know what I mean? So yeah, it's definitely. I did not expect Future to drop an album like that. Oh, no, I didn't definitely either. not whatsoever. But um, I'm like I'm here for it, and I'm definitely gonna listen to it a few more times, and hopefully I'll it'll grow on me a lot, and I'll enjoy it some more. Yeah, love you, Future. Yeah, man. Hope he's uh, hope he gets hope he gets good. You know. Yeah, yeah seriously, definitely no, like, real like, shit. I'm real fucking shit. The Future. Fucking yeah, the Future. DS2 was a classic. DS2, sorry. No cap. Oh, 100%. DS2 is big classic. That's just factual information, right? Uh, also so dropped recently is uh, Avicii's posthumous album, Tim. Uh, I listened to a little bit of it this morning. Uh, I've never been like crazy into Avicii, but uh, that track Heaven sounded really good. And it sounded like a pretty solid way to end off his career. Again, I wasn't like, I didn't know too much about him, wasn't like into him too much. The in album didn't sound too bad to me at all, and I'm not usually into posthumous releases. But um, the reviews haven't been amazing. I seen Rolling Stone give it two and a half stars, and NME gave it three stars, and they're kind of just saying like, ah, uh, like he kind of lost it like before he died. At least that's what it seemed from some bylines I saw. But I don't know. It sounded good to me. I'm sure his fans are gonna love it. 
a tough thing to go through. Was it last year he died? Uh, yeah, he he died last summer, I believe. Yeah, um, remember the uh, tribute at Veld? Oh, that was Martin yeah. amazing. Tribute? Was last amazing, set, yeah, right before his set or whatever. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was the last set of Veld. I remember. Mm, and he did yeah. a crazy tribute. Yeah, it was. Th- this album by Avicii, yeah, definitely was. It, it's a bit similar to his early stuff. I, I know I peeped uh, a few of his projects before. I, don't ask me if I know the name of them because I don't. Um, <laughs> I couldn't tell you any other stuff by him, to be honest. Yeah, like, but no, this this album was like it definitely had a few iffy tricks for me or uh, tracks for me, um, but. For the most part, it was very strong to me. Uh, I I loved Avicii. He was one of my favorite uh, DJs. Like in high school, that's all I listened to was EDM a lot of the time. And yeah, it was it was a hard loss, definitely on the music community. And I'm glad they had this one last album. Yeah, before I, f- I felt the album was kind of necessary for because he was big in the like electronics. Yeah, yeah. especially you in, feel like, the especially in like early 2010s. Like he was, it was, yeah. he was huge. He has classics for sure. And I feel like the reviews that like aren't so good are because like it's not him making the final edits to these tracks. Mm. It's it's his yeah. team making these edits. That's to what his I always tracks. say about uh, posthumous releases. They're kind of it's like. I, no one's really sure if the artist wanted that song released type of thing that's why i'm always iffy about them but it's always interesting oh no yeah it was it was definitely not a bad album for me and i i really enjoyed it so recently we did get a new track from uh, young thug travis scott and j cole it's called london <coughs> excuse me um what do we think about that one yeah it was all right <laughs> like I mean I feel you <laughs> Yo how's J. Cole Like what are we really saying <laughs> Yeah I, like, I'm sorry I don't think J. Cole fit on that track No he didn't No he didn't definitely I don't think he had a bad verse But he I don't think he fit on the track Uh, Like honestly It was just It was like Young Thug just has such a unique sound And then Travis Scott has such a unique sound And then you just have fucking J. Cole's boring ass flow in there And it's just like well, like, What the (laughs) fuck am I listening to Like come on man Like I'm just being honest here Like if it was just Young Thug and Travis It would have been a better track It definitely would have been a bit more of a hit I don't even think like the original song is like that crazy But it definitely like I would definitely bump it in the whip I just don't think the the coal verse just doesn't fit didn't do it for me and i just think it just could have been stronger track Mm -hmm. all around but it is what it is what can you do yeah so um big crit announces new album coming crit is here it's not it's been nine years since his breakout mixtape crit was here and two years after his incredible double album in 2017 forever is a mighty long time yep Classic. Uh, big album. Big, big, big album. If you haven't listened big, to that, go and listen to that. That's album. a big Yeah, one. big Pro- recommendation. Definitely one of the most impressive double albums I've heard in hip-hop, period, probably. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's facts. Yeah. So he dropped a new single, Crit, here. It's a super fun, just southern banger. It's got nice, like, chants in the hook. It's Yeah, just, it's a good summer track, I think. Definitely. Great it's track really to good. sing, dance to, just feel nice to, you yeah. know? Definitely one of those. So definitely looking forward to that. One of uh, one of my favorites. Yeah. I think he's hella underrated, and uh, I think he's definitely going to drop a highlight album of the year. One hundred percent. Also, recently on June seventh, Tyga dropped a new album. Yeah, Tyga. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't so uh, he dropped Legendary June seventh. Uh, I listened to a little bit of it this morning. First three tracks weren't bad. And then we got into some real, some some trash. Yeah, it was, it was I couldn't I couldn't get around. And the thing is, I've been fucking with Tiger recently. His Same. last few singles, Same. especially like Taste and Fuck, oh, there's another the one. First on Dip, Loco, Dip, Dip, mm, Dip slap, the first on Go Loco. Dip, Dip slap. The first on Go Loco. The hook, yeah, on his yeah, the hook on there man. even was nice. Yeah. Like he was, he was. I was kind of rooting for him. Like I felt like he was kind of the underdog, but. This ain't it, man. I don't think. He's an al- I don't think <laughs> was he's it, an album was his guy. production good? Like, what was bad about it? Beats were all right. Like, there was a f- there was a mustard beat on the Blueface track. Oh, okay. That, uh, I was telling you about earlier. Blueface beat mustard. And like, it was yeah. Like, no beats weren't bad. It just it just like it could have had so much more. Just those yeah. things when you listen to oh, like yeah. even on like kind of like the culture two vibes where you just 
you're listening to it and you're like, oh, this isn't the worst thing in the world, but it could be so much better. Yeah. Honestly, like I've never really been a Tyga fan. I've only really liked them for the t- features. So mm. I probably won't even peep the album to be yeah, honest. Yeah, no, it's, I wouldn't recommend if you're, it's not, it's nothing crazy. <laughs> Uh, also, we got, I heard this morning, uh, Casey Veggies dropped a new album, Organic, uh, on June 7th. I don't know if you guys have, are aware of Casey Veggies. No. He's, he used to fuck with Odd Future a good amount. Oh, okay. oh dope. Yeah, dope. He's, he's still, uh, he's pretty dope. He was on um, he was on the last track on Pinata, actually, we'll oh, get into later. Big classic. Yeah, he was on that last Cypher track. Oh, okay. Uh, we also got pretty recently, May 31st, the uh, Elton John biopic Rocket Man came out in theaters and it was equipped with a soundtrack. And I'm pretty hyped to see it. I still haven't, s- I don't think any of us have seen no, it I yet. Seen no, it. We, uh, we'll, we'll definitely check that out. We definitely need to talk about it, give like a bit of a review when we all yeah. do go see it. But, um,. Yeah, like I I definitely have something to say about the movie with the reviews it's gotten and the performance by I can't think of his name right now. Um but he was in all the Kingsman movies, but um he he delivers an authentic Elton John impression and he he di- he actually did uh all the audio for uh, the really? movie, which was very unique. Yeah, he, re- he re-recorded all the Elton John songs for the soundtrack. And Elton had um, some say in the making of the movie. I, I believe he was actually a producer. Yeah, I heard that too. I, he definitely had a hand in it. I know that for sure. But and it's Taron Egerton. Sorry, I just yeah, there uh, found the is. guy's name. <laughs> There's the guy's name. Um, Big props. So why are people not seeing this movie? Like, it just... it like dropped at the box office i think it only made 25 million 25. and godzilla be- came before it like you guys are chopped go see this movie man like that's like bohemian like that's like another bohemian rhapsody that just came out yeah. the queen biopic it's- exactly and this movie got actually better reviews than bohemian rhapsody really? which is crazy but yeah go see this movie man it it's incredible i've seen a few clips and it it is an amazing film and it's, I it's strongly recommend. John, man. Yeah, like I mean, I'm sure if they did a good job, I'm sure it's worth seeing. Living legend, man. Living 100%, 100%. legend. Hundred percent. So since we're kind of starting off a little bit mid year, uh, we wanted to do a little bit of a recap. We're gonna run through albums that have been released so far this year, and then we'll do a little chalk up of what's coming out or what we're hoping to see for the rest of the year so biggest release so far this year probably igor yeah Tyler, the creator. Oh, yep that definitely have to agree so i uh i'm hella impressed with this album i physically can't stop listening to it in love with every track she <laughs> genuinely can't stop listening to it it's it's such a great album and um I'm I'm so glad Tyler went in this direction with doing a complete 360 from mm. his old old yeah. music like just, Wolf, Cherry yeah. Bomb. Just focus on so much more of like an indie pop type of neo soul sound than like more hip hop. There was still rap hip hop there, but it was 100%. It was more focused on neo soul funk shit like that. R and B. Yeah, for sure. And I think this opens up a whole new opportunity for Tyler. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't think anyone's really, in my opinion, taken him seriously as a producer. Mm -hmm. And on this album, he really came out as came out of his shell as a producer. And I think he's been like building towards that, like pretty much his whole career. Yeah. And especially with like flower boy, like two years before one of his, probably his most like creative release and most like ambitious release to date. Oh and yeah. Now he comes through and drops this like pretty much out of the blue and just kind of floors it and just kind of impresses everyone again. I don't know. I think he's shaping up to be one of the best hip hop artists of the decade. He's yeah, and I I definitely have to agree with that and I I hope and I pray that it's it's up for a Grammy next I, year. That yeah. It better be. For sure. It got, Flower it's Boy was be. up, right? Flower Boy got yeah, nominated. Flower Boy did. Yep. Yeah, you know, I don't know. What beat it that year? We'll Kendrick? see. Uh, yeah, that was Damn. Yeah, that was Damn, right? Yeah. yeah. Damn won sure a rap album of the year. I can't remember what else was nominated. I think 
Drake was definitely in there. He always is. But. Yeah, I think more <laughs> came out that year. I don't know, but um. Anyways, moving on, uh, we got Ventura, Anderson Pac followed up his last album Oxnard, not even six months after his release, with just some great funk R and B jams. Yeah, very yeah. soulful. It's a great album. Yeah, it's, it's just fantastic. I bumped the shit in the car. The shit slaps in the car. Oh yeah, windows, windows down, down. Summer day. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's how exactly. Doing, man. Yeah, Gianmarco, like, what's your favorite track off it? What would you say? Uh, probably Winter Circle. That's yeah. a good one. I'm really liking uh, the one with Smokey Robinson. Yeah, like, that's got to be mine. Like, really? That's, that's got to be mine. That's a good feeler, man. I feel that one. And uh, just crazy impressive how he drops Oxnard. Pretty good album. A lot of people very critically acclaimed. Yeah. I wasn't crazy about it. And then he follows out, boom, dropping another one. And I'm like, all right, like we'll see. And it just blew me out of the water. I was yeah. floored by this album. I like this album better than Oxnard. Me too. I, I agree. And... Like it's hard for me to say that because I'm in, I'm into like the more like you know like hype shit and like rap yeah. and a bit and that's that's kind of the sa- the direction he went in Oxnard and yeah for sure with this it was totally R and B yeah like, and I, just I really like strictly R and B and I I really enjoyed this this record for sure yeah I'm definitely gonna be bumping this all year. Uh, moving on, we also recently got uh, Megan The Stallion come up from uh, Memphis. Dropped Fever. I don't know if you guys have listened to it, but uh, very just like kind of like pussy popping type of like Cardi B type of rap. Okay. I know you guys aren't like, yeah. but uh, that shit hard, and I'm fucking with it. It's uh, it's got your boys' approval. <laughs> Definitely slaps. Uh, another one recently, uh, Denzel Curry dropped Zoo, a little 30 minute like kind of mini album thing, and uh, apparently he freestyled the whole thing. That explains a lot. In, in what yeah. way? It's I don't know. There was, he he has corny bars on every album, bro. Like, okay, that's cap. Really? No, ta- I think taboo and I don't know. I don't remember. I only listened to it once, but I don't remember hearing that many corny bars. Not on as Zoo? much as taboo, at least. I think uh, Zoo was way was like ah fuck. That's actually tough. But yeah, I thought it was. Uh, Stuff. That's what I, I mean. Even know like I it's so hard. It's. I really enjoyed it personally, and uh, I think I like Taboo a lot more. To be honest, I think it was definitely a more ambitious project. Oh yeah. I think this one was just kind of more slaps and just. Yeah. If he really did freestyle it, then like boom, just then like I'm probably fucking with it more. There's definitely a few tracks I wasn't crazy about, but like just like I can't be mad when it's a hard beat and he's just snapping. Yeah, like yeah. yeah there was the few tracks on Taboo where he would have the bars that just kind of ruined it for me. But you know, like the Rick Ross track, fucking slap. Oh, that shit is oh, yeah. it, it, like is disgusting. And they're they're actually from the the same area. They're from the same hood, I guess mm. you could say. And yeah, like man. It's it was a perfect match like on this record yeah, and honestly yeah it was it, for me I love the album and I'm a yeah. huge Denzel Curry fan and I'll continue to follow his music yeah. past this. Skepta finally comes back with uh, Ignorance Is Bliss. Big so, album, big album. It's a solid grind banger. It's uh, what was it? His last album was Konnichiwa and he dropped a EP I believe in like. 2016. Yeah, the, with the chains on the cover. Yeah. Oh, that was damn. slap. Yeah, the five I forgot about yeah, that. I don't remember what it was That's called. That's crazy. But damn, that shit was hard. And, uh, you know, he's just doing it again. There's a good amount of very solid bangers yeah. on here. Bullet from a gun? Biggest track. Yeah, I still have to Great. peep. I'm locking. Bro, he flows on it like crazy. Great opening to the album, yeah. for sure. Uh, rapper Go to League, 2 chains. That was a big one. Yeah. Huge. We bumped that Huge. one a lot. Yeah. What's your favorite track? I said me is the best track, bro. Which one? I said me. Oh yeah, that's solo a solo track. Yeah. That's a really solid. I think the one with Kendrick might be. Oh my yeah, favorite. Mama yeah. hit just a because lick of the something? Mama I hit a lick. Yeah. yeah. Oh my uh, god. The two the, or the uh, Pharrell production on there, the beat, the drum pattern on it is insane, and the beat just always gets stuck in my head. Yeah, that or. Probably High Top Versace, the one with Young Thug. Oh, I, yeah. I, oh my God. I put that on repeat Wasn't when there I first heard I'm going to play this after, man. That's like, shit. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> was there a Wayne feature on that album? Yeah, it was a the $2 way- bill. Yeah, that he, track slapped. His verse on that was yeah, insane. Yeah, Wayne snapped. Yeah. As usual, he snapped. Yeah. Um, 
So moving on from there, we got an upcomer, the baby, baby on baby. What do we think of that? I know we're fucking with. Oh it. We all, man, yeah, that's just oh yeah. man, just uh, mad interesting, quirky beats, hella funny bars, funny bars, very charismatic. Yeah. He's he's dope. I'm fucking with him. He's definitely gonna be a huge presence in the future. I haven't peeped his earlier stuff. It's good, bro. Yeah, I I still need to peep. I've just heard the uh, the self. No, it's, it's called baby. baby on baby. Yeah, Sorry. Yeah. Um, but yeah, man, it it was a great tape and it was good. It was all, like very solid. And the slaps. the track with offsets got to be my babysitter, favorite. babysitter, oh, yeah. Yeah. and and obviously Shug. Yeah, Shug. Sure. Like Walker Texas Ranger is my favorite. Oh, yeah. last I was one. bumping that's, that in the whip today, man. That was a classic. Yeah. <laughs> all right, moving on, we got a uh, Schoolboy Q Crash Talk. He kind of went for the banger route, just yeah. more simplistic songs. Definitely, at least I found. Uh, I think I don't think the outcome delivered as strong as his previous albums, but it's definitely still an essential listen for the year. Yeah, I agree. Definitely. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. It's it was very different from like Blank Face and Oxymoron. And yeah. There was a few iffy tracks on there, but it, it was a very strong album from School. Yeah, Boy. definitely. And there's some like must listen tracks on there if you're a Schoolboy Q fan. 100 percent yeah yeah like i i would strongly recommend the album Definitely. if you're a huge schoolboy school fan uh we already covered future's new album but future also dropped two albums already this year which isn't completely out of the ordinary but the wizard another this is a solid banger album from future typical stuff he does yeah, yeah it was is very typical future and there's really not too much to say about it no if you like it you like it yeah. if you don't you don't it's just kind of yeah. it's future at this point you know yeah like you, you know what you're you, getting yeah you know what to expect and uh you know we're gonna get into one that uh i might get made fun of a little bit for here but thank you next uh that ariana grande <laughs> album <laughs> You know, I don't think it was good as Sweetener, but it was some kind of generically written pop tracks. Uh, I think it's a still pretty fun. Definitely a good listen if you like Ariana Grande. I don't think the boys here do. No, no thanks. I'm uh, I'm a bit of a fan, so, you know, I, I, I was slapping that one a little bit when it came out, you know? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know about that one, Chief. I'm sorry. I don't know. That's nah, all good. That's all good. I hear you. So moving on from there, Flume, a little bit of electronic. We got a dope mixtape from Flume. That shit was fucking insane. It was, it was amazing. It was definitely yeah. crazy, man. It was a fucking experience. Yeah. It was definitely crazy. It was a good one, man. It Whenever was, he drops, it's a big drop. Like, it's definitely everything. Really how good. how to build a relationship with JPEG Mafia? He oh. like Flume just catered to that, JPEG's taste, man. That track was incredible. Like for real, it was insane. I loved every second of it. <clears throat> so boom, moving on from there, we got Lil Pump, Harvard dropout. <laughs> oh I was kind of at the you top. You gotta of the mention year. Pump on here. We man. could just we could just cover that real quick. You know, it, it was pretty hard. Yeah, it, I guess. Bangers on bangers. You listen to Pump. You bangers it was on like, you bangers. Know, it was yeah, it was pretty hard. That. No Pump. <laughs> like, I mean, no Pump, man. What do you want to say about Lil Pump? He's not pump? a lyricist, man. He's just there to get the get the crowd. To get going. what? <laughs> to the get the crowd going. To get the bag. Know? I don't know. You know. <laughs> so um, moving on from there, Weezer dropped two albums already. Uh, the Teal album, which is full of covers from completely random. They did like TLC, No Scrubs. Yeah, pretty fun, interesting album. Weird, I don't know. Yeah, like if you want to check it out, go ahead. I liked it. I had fun listening to it. And I they also I dropped peeped. their. Sorry. No, I just I just was saying I haven't peeped it yet. I yeah, I mean it's I'm a big Weezer. It's, fan. it's a dope listen. It's literally just sounds like Weezer doing cover songs. Like, well, that's dope. It's dope. They released uh, the Black album as well. I've only heard the two singles. I haven't listened to the full album yet, but they sounded pretty dope. So check out for Weezer if you're fucking with Weezer. Uh, next, we got YG's new album came out recently. For real, for real, big, big album. Yeah, like yeah. massive, man. Ball like massive. Slap, bro. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I was on the block, man. <clears throat> yeah, I was on the block. Those are definitely highlight tracks. I'm. Uh, I definitely don't think it's bad. I'm fucking with it. There's, I don't prob know, probably a good like eighty percent. I'm like I like. Yeah. I think in the dark. I think it's track three in the dark. It might be like his worst. So. <laughs> Yeah, that shit is yeah, I, it wasn't, I couldn't. I listened to it once through, and that yeah. was the track that stood out. Sorry, it, John. No, nah, I was just saying it wasn't a consistent album. Like, yeah, stay, uh, still brazy was just like track one, like 
beginning to end was amazing, but it was I don't just know. bangers on bangers, man. Yeah. Not even that; it was just a better album in general. I think, like, I feel that for sure. Even uh, what, what did you release after? Still brazy. What, I was um, stay dangerous. Yeah, like that was alright too, but I don't know. It's he hasn't gotten back to still brazy, like. Yeah, yeah, that, that like G Funk sound. Uh, yeah, I don't know if you will, but yeah, yeah, we'll see what happens. We'll, we'll always check for YG. Just one more thing on that album. The sure. one thing I really liked was uh, Keisha had a baby. Man, mm. that brought back some serious Tupac vibes. Man, definitely, some, just some definitely serious Tupac vibes. Hundred percent. That's I feel all I gotta that. say, man. Next up, we got um, Solange. When I get home. I loved it. Very chill, laid back delivery from Solange. I thought it was a very interesting pair with the production. They had like a good amount of Pharrell beats. I don't even know if you guys listen to the Solange album or not. I haven't peeped it. I, I noticed it and I, I saw it popping. It's weird. It's definitely like, I saw some mixed reviews for it, but I was definitely a fan. Um, speaking of Solange, we got her sister, not to overshadow her or anything, but uh, she dropped a live album. Homecoming uh, went along with the incredible movie, I think, at least. Yeah, it was Revolving around her Coachella performance. You saw that, right, Joe Marco? Yeah. That shit was fucking insane. Yeah, like... I don't know. <laughs> just the first, like, ten minutes, I was mesmerized, man. It was just like, what is yeah. going on right shit now? Like, insane. And the album itself is, like, incredible when you, like, sit and listen. It's long as hell, but... No, it's a good one. Speaking of Beyonce, Lemonade... Finally dropped on Spotify. Oh, yeah. yeah. Really? It wasn't on Spotify? Hey, no, yeah, man. Get off Spotify. You have an <laughs> iPhone. <laughs> Leave me alone, bro. I like the Spotify, bro. Can you get Jay-Z? No. I'm just going to go silent. Point. I got nothing to say the to The goal. You can't get the goat of all <laughs> You can't hip-hop. argue against that. You don't have Jay-Z. Yeah, because I contribute to his uh, billion, bro. I just purchase his albums. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's a billionaire now. Yeah. Boom. It's crazy. Yeah, he's That's the goat, a big so. one. The first rapper, right? Yeah, first rapper. I think it's, out of everyone, it should be Jay Z. I, I mean, he's he been is, hustling all his he's life. The goat, man. Man. He's definitely the goat. And he, uh, they calculated his net worth stemming from his associations with Ace of Spades, Duce, Title, Rock Nation, and of course his music catalog and his art collection, and his even like real estate and all that shit. And yeah, he's I mean, just you can't you're. You're not playing with Jay. Yeah. Imagine being his kids, man. Imagine your mom being Beyonce and Jay Z. Like, <laughs> you never have to work in your life. Yeah. Good you life, basically, man. you're just like, but real shit. Like, congratulations to to, to Hov and yeah. like, man, yeah, like, it like, it's well amazing. deserved. He's been grinding for years. Very yeah, well deserved since like, like the '90s. Hundred yeah. percent. So moving on from there, we got a uh, pop morbid stuff. Actually, Will, Chris, and Philip, our buddies, are seeing them tonight right now. Oh, actually, oh really? Yeah, they're in Toronto right now. Oh, okay. And, uh, it's fantastic pop punk band. If y'all are into that, go check them out. Definitely uh, worth a listen if you're into pop punk type of stuff. But DJ Khaled dropped another album, compilation of songs, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. Yeah, I, don't know. I have no idea what he calls. Uh, the stuff he drops. Man. So he releases Major Key. What was that? That was like the first. That was a big one. And I was there was a there was some like good amount of tracks on there that we like listened to. And then he did like the same thing. And then he did the same thing. And then he's doing the same thing again. And it's just getting worse and worse. I think it's just songs with artists that are relevant. Yeah. And yeah. They don't. Yeah. They're not good. They're not like they don't last at all. No. <laughs> I can't. Yeah, I can't name any. Songs. Yeah. And did you guys see the video? He he posted a video on Instagram and he's talking about. He's basically like sub dissing like Tyler the Creator is with like a lot yeah, of things. Yeah, I saw that on Twitter. He was salty about him. He DJ Khaled didn't get number one, and Igor got number one. Yeah, and he's saying he's like, oh, I make like music that like people like listen to and like you hear them like talking about it on the radio, not this like mysterious shit because yeah, there wasn't I saw like pr- much promotion behind Igor. And it's like, dog, you're just getting shit on. <laughs> it just it's just such a bad look, like. You're in the music industry, man. You're supposed to be spreading positivity. To yeah, wanna, you can't be salty like, because your album's not going number one. Like, just let Tyler be, man. This is his first number one album, I think. Yeah. yeah Am is. I correct? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, just let him be. Like, I, I actually heard the news about that video, and they quote unquote told uh, called it a tantrum. He was throwing yeah. a full-on tantrum. You well, are yeah. a grown-ass he man. Looks like, yeah, he looked cheese, like yeah. genuinely mad. 
Like, know. man, you're a grown ass man. Yeah. Relax. Man. I don't know, but he needs to uh, get into a different industry. <laughs> Love his early shit, though. Love All his right. early shit, though. Yeah. All right. Uh, that's Father of Assad. And speaking of fathers, we got Father of Four, Offset's bangers. first solo album. Huge. Straight, straight bangers. Well, sauce that one to John Marco. He's a, he's a fan of Offset. Offset, Father of Four was just a compilation of just slappers. Like, Made Men is. Like one of the best tracks on the album. Like it's, I don't know. It wasn't a crazy like conceptually. Obviously, it's Offset. Half of the album was him apologizing to Cardi B about cheating on her. Like the first. Yeah. Time. Is it really? I never. Yeah. There's a lot yeah, of. Yeah. They, I can't remember what track. It's a. Tr- uh, it's with Cardi B on it, and the whole intro is him saying like, "I'm sorry, Cardi." Blah blah blah. But then it's it like turns. A, it's it's a slapper. Like it turns yeah. out, and Cardi snaps. <laughs> yeah, it's a crazy. It's like track. a it's like a dollar store version of Jay Z's 444 when he was like, oh, apologizing yeah. to Beyonce. Yeah. And all that. Yeah. yeah. And I. And I gotta mention the track uh, North Star, man. It was well, that was a good track. It was actually really good, and I haven't really heard good CeeLo Green in a while. Yeah, and he, he came out of nowhere. He worked like, really now. well on that track. Yeah, like, like I'm not the, gonna lie, they hmm. they worked really well together, in my opinion. The, yeah, I don't know. The biggest track on the album was Legacy. Yeah, the I really and, liked Legacy. I, yeah, I Twenty One and that Travis. That shit was probably like the highlight track. I that think. was a pretty good one. Yeah, Takeoffs was still the best though. No cap. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay, I don't know. Uh, Mac DeMarco, if you're into the whole indie rock, little singer songwriter folk type of thing, uh, I don't think it's anywhere near as consistent as his previous two albums, but definitely some really solid tracks on here. If you're a fan of Mac DeMarco, you're probably gonna love it. There was probably two or three songs on here that I thought were just straight up trash, <laughs> which hasn't happened on a Mac DeMarco album for me before. So that was interesting, but I still got fantastic songs out of here. So I'm happy as a fan. I was pleased. Yeah, I really like Black more <laughs> Mac DeMarco. What was that, uh, Chief? <laughs> but salad days is a classic it's something i bump on the regular and now one. that it's summer i'm definitely going to be bumping it in the whip oh yeah baby um we kind of have to mention billy eilish ah <laughs> oh, don't get me started man i'm not a fan <laughs> no no one is i no. gave her a solid chance like the the beat on bad guy i'm not gonna lie is kind of it's dope. cool but it's i just think her production and everything is so minimal and she just comes off as boring and emotionless yeah it's just it doesn't work for me and um but like good for her and all her success she has fans obviously 100%. but like yeah she's just not for me man and i i have no intention of peeping any future releases to be honest yeah. we'll uh we'll see how that turns out next year i don't know <laughs> Um, Logic released the worst rap album of the year, like possibly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Very strong chance. And like, hey, I, you know, like I wrote that here, and I didn't even, I wasn't even the one who thought of it. I've seen publications, and like Anthony Fantano said, like worse, like it's horrible. It I, 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 I haven't seen brutal. one. The only thing kind of good I've seen people say about it is people defending it, saying, "Oh, it's not that bad," type of thing. And like when you when the best thing you hear about an album is it's not that bad. It's, it's bad. Probably pretty shit. Yeah, it's bad. Like he's just, <laughs> just straight up bad. I'm sorry, like, he's just trying way too hard, man. Like yeah. he thinks he has all these haters that like hate on him because of like he doesn't have totally enough listeners different to have reason. haters. No, no one listens to him no. to have haters. Bro. No, exactly. And it just doesn't make sense. Why do you keep going on this trend of like? Oh, I'm just gonna drop bare albums on my haters. Why? I don't get. He it. did it the the album previous too, and, and whole, I, like, it just didn't work. And the whole like political side of him, it's like no one cares. No, and yeah. it it's a damn shame because I really liked his early shit. I think the was, Sinatra tapes were really well done, but like as soon as he started going mainstream, it just it didn't didn't work. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. We'll check on Logic next year, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. Uh, next up, we got Nav, Bad Habits, straight out of, what is he, from Brampton or Toronto? Like? No, he's from uh, Rexdale, Toronto. Oh, so, you know, John Marco pretty, pretty knows, close bro. by. We can pull up on him if we want to. How's Nav doing, John Marco? You're a big fan. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, like I like him, but 
I don't know. It was a good album. I think, like, he has a lot of, there's a couple solid features and, like, a lot, like, it broke him more into the mainstream, I think. Like, a lot of more people know about him now off this album. Like, I remember I saw on Instagram, uh, Nas was endorsing it. He po- he posted about it. Yeah, that wow. was wow. I, mean, I couldn't believe it. Nas. I did not yeah. know that. That's yeah. crazy. Bro, Weekend paid him for I'm telling you, Weekend slipped him like 10 grand. Like, hey, <laughs> Yo, can you please just post, post this? Just post it, bro. There's no way Nas. <laughs> like, I need some promo from nah, the old heads. Bro, like, yeah. I need some promo from the legends. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. I don't crazy, know. Like, bro. I liked it, but obviously, like, not, not many people like him. But yeah. yeah. I'm not a big Nav nah, fan. Yeah. Like, I don't mind him. Like, I liked... Uh, the self-titled yeah this mixtape uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah that was kind of there's dope. the odd song out yeah. yeah. just he sounds so repetitive yeah it's that's what, the problem like, I don't mind it but mo- like that's the biggest thing like he sounds the same in every track like it's it gets really boring and what's the what's the album he dropped last year reckless, reckless? Yo, oh relax man. be careful be careful be careful no there's <laughs> there's no there's two good tracks on the two. album and they're both features and you know what I'm no. gonna say, man. I'm like a champion. It's beyond. Uh, champion. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, moving on from there, we got um, American Football Three is a indie emo rock band. They came back with their third self-titled album since their classic debut in '99. They're super cool. Fantastic, definitely worth a listen if you uh, if you like some sad boy rock and roll. Give it a listen. Very good stuff. Uh, Flame Agra by Flying Lotus is another pure listening experience in every sense of the word and it seemed a little bit of all of his previous albums combined into one to me at least is very experimental electronic music kind of uh, jazz funk type of stuff really very interesting definitely check out if you're looking for some new weird shit to listen to it is fucking mind blowing like no nah, like genuinely. real shit it is genuinely mind blowing yeah the like, instruments and the fast tempos that come with the, the even the bass drumming with thundercat is all over all most of his albums it, it's a it's a fantastic experience of an album oh yeah and which it, usually comes with his type of releases uh, yeah i definitely recommend you guys check out this album cuz it slaps. It's wild. <laughs> wild. Uh, Kevin Abstract goes solo for an album and drops Arizona Baby. Uh, Kevin Abstract from the uh, boy band, hip hop, rap group, Brockhampton, pop group. I'd probably call them a pop group now. But yeah. Yeah. Um, I only really liked one song. I was not a fan of the overblown auto tuned vocals and the melodies just did not work for me whatsoever. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't really peep this album. Uh, You're lucky. I, <laughs> I, I am a huge fan of Brockhampton. Don't get me wrong, but I, I think they should just stick together as a group. Like I've heard some samples uh, from Kevin Abstract in the past, and they just didn't really do it for me. Like I respect him as an artist. Don't get me wrong, but man just just stick to your own. You know, <laughs> like just stick yeah, to what you're good at. It wasn't a good album. Bro. No, like. But yeah. that's all I gotta say, man. <clears throat> Juice World, straight up fucking trash. I'm sorry, I <laughs> don't see the fucking appeal in this guy whatsoever. Yeah, that sucks. Awful singing voice. His, it's just, it's just so generic. I don't. If somebody can just tell me what is so special about Juice World and what makes him a valuable player in the like hip hop, R and B, whatever you want to place him nowadays. Show me, because I just don't see it whatsoever. Yeah, Wyatt, I'm gonna have to stop you right there, man. All right. Uh, I'm I'm a huge fan of Juice World. I'm oh, not gonna lie. Fan. Yeah. Hu- no, no, maybe <laughs> maybe not huge, but you know, like I'm I'm a fan of him. I I loved his debut. I thought it was like really cool and really like out there, you know. Okay. Um, and he, there's not much that goes into his production. Like I I respect it because the some of the beats are kind of hard like you got to give that to him i'm not saying i liked his last shit because his last shit didn't do it for me but, but you like this his, his debut new, no his, oh like just learning about his i'm debut. talking about his debut but bro it's yeah. all bad bro i don't know what you're talking about bro he's got bro, juice he's world. got some are you, are you cool, talking about the same are yes juice we're talking world. about juice world bro <laughs> but like he's got some solid tracks on the like come on lucid dreams man like that's a banger. he stole the track from who? His only good track he stole. I didn't know that, but that was not nah, like he sampled it, but like the melody, it's it's exactly the same. Basically as, ripped off the song. Yeah. Anyways, I liked the whole I just debut. Know, what was the fucking song that came out? I 
I'm pretty sure it was the single to his last song. I think it was called Robbery. Yeah. You put my heart in a bag. Yeah, oh yeah, my yeah. Good that God, I wanted bad. to rip my dick off. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, no, I, but I love the uh, self-titled track on his debut. It's called uh, "Armed and Dangerous." It, it was pr- it was banging, man. It was. Nice, I nice can't get behind the vocals. Yeah. I don't know. It just I I just like him. I don't know why. It just it, he he just has a unique sound to me that, that I just I I fucks with. I feel you, man. Dripper down two. <laughs> Another Drip, bad album. Dripper down two. <laughs> oh, like, gonna. Um, where are the good albums? Uh, kind of another one. I just don't see the appeal in this dude. He's just kind of like a dollar store young thug. Yeah. Like I agree with you, but I also love some of his features. Like I'm not gonna lie, I don't like his solo shit as much but i do like you know like space cadet on the metro Boomin shit tape come on man yeah that's kind of a banger to listen, you to, whole, lie. to listen to a three minute gunna song with just gunna bro it's not happening i've yeah, never you, done that bro, I, I like it from feature. a feature perspective <laughs> you need, a, yeah, yeah, you you need a feature to, from gunna bro you yeah, can't get no. a full yeah you have to pay me i can't listen to him just on his own don't yeah, get me wrong I don't know. So we got a uh, Khalid dropped an album, Free Spirit. I didn't listen to it. I'm not. I didn't listen to it. About I, I peeped it. Yeah. Was it good? Was it? I definitely liked it. It's got a lot of summer vibes in in it, and along with uh, some of the stuff he dropped before in American Teen, uh, mm. it was it was a pretty solid album from Khalid, man. Like I really I really enjoy him as an artist, and he's definitely up and coming. Like he blew up. It, after American Teen had yeah, dropped, oh, him. he was huge, and like I, I hope he continues with this trend he's going in, and yeah, peep, peep the new Khalid tape because it's it's definitely a summer vibe. Nice, nice. We got a uh, Injury Reserve came out with a, another album recently. They're an interesting kind of alternative rap group. I've never been crazy about them, but they definitely have an interesting sound, and they're definitely talented pushing that kind of experimental hip-hop rap type shit cool, cool so um definitely check them out i'm sure more people will enjoy them more than i personally did uh james blake released an album i think at the beginning of the year yeah uh, assume form i never heard it it was good yeah it's different but there's a travis scott feature on it oh yeah. mile high bro that's, I heard, that's I heard Mile sound, High. I heard Mile high, high, but yeah, I just, I don't know. I never got around to it, I think. It was really I good. really Mile liked album. Mile High. I got to peep the full album. It's though. good. I was yeah. into it. Yeah. All well, right. Brayden's looking at me weird now. I definitely have to check Yeah, it. like, <laughs> <laughs> downloading it as we speak. Yeah, that's what Did you hear the album? <laughs> Listen, uh, it's good, bro. Boom. Uh, we got uh, King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard released uh, Fishing for Fishies. I still haven't heard it yet, but they're a very cool, like, kind of psychedelic garage rock band. Oh. So if you're into that type of shit, check it out. I'm sure it's good. I uh, just got on to them this year, so I'll catch up. Yeah, soon. I'll definitely peep, man. So we got uh, Beast Coast. What is it? Flatbush Zombies, Pro Era, and I think that's it. Is it not? Yeah, I'm sure. We might be missing a few add-ons. I, I feel but. like I am, but uh, Escape from New York. Um, you know, I was kind of just hoping for... Just like hard beats and just amazing verses, great flows, tight bars, good raps, but there was a lot of singing tracks. Yeah. A lot of just odd things they tried to do, I think, that just didn't work whatsoever. Yeah, wasn't it? Um, I, I, yeah, like. I think they went for a very ambitious approach and it just kind of fell flat on its face. I don't think it's the worst thing in the world. I just think it could have been so much better considering the talented artists on that yeah. platform. Yeah, and with Flatbush Zombies on that on that album, man, like they definitely should not have gone in the singing direction. I mean, if you listen to Vacation in Hell, man, like you know what their sound is like and it just seemed like they were trying something new and it mm-hmm. just it just didn't work for me and yeah. like Come on, like who really who? pictures Michi singing, bro? Yeah, yeah I, I want to know who they played this to. Like, who told them it was good? I feel that. I like, I don't know. I feel like they, they just kept yes, it man. to themselves. I don't, who, man. I don't know who they think their audience is because I can't see anyone in their audience wanting to hear like Zombie Juice sing. Like, no, yeah, no, they go to people go Definitely to Beast Coast not. and people say people put people onto Flatbush Zombies and Pro Era when they say, "Oh, you want to listen to like real hip hop, lyrics, bars? Listen to like these guys out of New York, Beast Coast." Like that's been like the movement, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, and 
yeah, I, I still love Flatbush Zombies, but yeah, this wasn't it for me, and good luck to them in the future, I guess. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> so we got a few more here. We got Suicide Boys and Travis Barker dropped a new album. Haven't listened to it, but definitely need to check it out. That would definitely be an interesting one. Suicide listen. Boys, bang. Ill, ill motherfuckers. <laughs> Crazy. Uh, we got Everything's For Sale, Boogie. Dude just got signed to Shady Records, I think, a year ago. Yep. Pretty dope Very stuff. Done. Very talented dude. He's dope. He's got it. Yeah, I've definitely been meaning to get into him. Like, after the feature on I Was On The Block on YG's album, mm. like, he had a strong feature on he's, there, man. Yeah, he's he's hard, man. He had a, tra- he had a break... I think it was his breakout single. Uh, what was it called? Oh, it's gonna bug me. It's such a simple name, too, but it was a banger song, and I bumped it all the time. But uh, anyways, the the Chemical Brothers also released a new album I have written here. Of course, I don't have the album name, and I of course, I haven't heard the album. So that's all we're going to get into with that. But moving on from there, now we'll get into our classic of the week. Each week, we'll pick a classic album and do a bit of a deep dive on what we think makes it special, why we think it's so amazing, what we personally love about it so much, our favorite tracks, maybe some fun facts about the album. So yeah, I'll start it off with uh, Big L, his debut album, Lifestyles of the Poor and Dangerous, uh, kind of flew into my head. It was recently Big L's birthday, rest in peace, May 30th, and uh, rip. Big R.I.P. Rip. Big L. Big rip, big legend. Uh, one of the best punchline rappers to ever exist. Yep. Crazy talented. Yeah, definitely have to agree. 100%. The subject matter is what you'd expect from a 90s New York rap album, but his charismatic delivery and his way of constantly keeping your attention, waiting for what he's going to say next, because literally every punchline just hits hard. You really get a taste of his personality very quick on this album. And uh, it's just such a fun album to listen to. I'm telling you, every punchline hits you like a knife in the chest. My favorite tracks, obviously, put it on. Huge hit. All Black, De Graveyard has a sick verse from Jay-Z on there. He sounds super young, and it always just... Oh, I love it. Um, I Don't Understand It and Fit Up With That Bullshit is probably my favorite tracks on there. It's a fantastic album. Definitely a classic. Mm-hmm. Moving on from there, we got John Marco's classic. Go ahead, boss. Uh, so for my classic, uh, I picked a, a classic rock track uh, n- uh, released in 1986. Uh, it's called the album's called 5150 by uh, Van Halen. Uh, it's a nine-track album, 43 minutes. Uh, it's a little quick album, but the significantly it was big because uh, in the early 80s, everyone thought rock was dying, and then Van Halen came in in the er, 78 or to early 80s, they started grabbing uh, headlines and they started making it and everyone thought they would be the savior to uh, rock in the 80s. And then in 85, their lead singer uh, was kicked from the band, David Lee Roth, and they needed a new singer. And so this was the first album with their new singer. His name was Segi ha- uh, Sammy Hagar. Um, and it was a big album just because it was such a change up in rock or in type of rock. Because everyone was used to like hard rock, like really hard, grimy, like party rock stuff like that. Uh, like, but this was more fifty one fifty was a was more. How do I say it? Like it was more slow. It was a lot of stuff about like most of the tracks are about like girl, like love stuff like that. Like my favorite track is like why can't this be love? Dreams, love walks in. Like mm. it was a big album and it let a new like subgenre of rock kind of like get born into the 80s like reborn sorry because it, it like i said everything was hard so it let also sammy hagar could play the guitar for so uh it let their other lead guitarist uh eddie van halen he could play the uh piano and stuff so it, oh, it let him in, yeah Boom. it let him play piano and stuff that's good. so i'm up next i got pinata by freddie gibbs and madlib <sighs> Uh, this this isn't really that old. It dropped actually in Mar- on March eighteenth, twenty fourteen. Some of the features that are notable on this album, it's got to be Danny Brown, Domo Genesis, Absol, uh, Earl Sweatshirt, and many more. Oh yeah, like there's there's a good chunk there's a there. bunch. I just couldn't fit it. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, this this album definitely includes some funky and soul beats from Madlib and 
this is this was something new for Freddie, I think, because he he's a he's a gangster rapper, bro. Like straight up, through like, and, and like this pairing was very questionable at the time, and it turned out to work really well. It's like out fantastic. It it was it is a fantastic album, and I have nothing but great things to say about it. I I gave it actually an, a solid nine point five out of ten. Mm. Um, why it isn't this one of the like your favorite ra- uh, albums of all time? One hundred and ten percent, I believe top ten rap albums to come out of the two thousand tens. I think Freddie Gibbs might be the most underrated rapper out right now. Yeah, um, I agree. And that album is really it is one of my favorites. Like probably like a personal favorite. Like probably top ten, top fifteen. Like I really enjoy that album. And um, and sorry. it's very relevant. Uh, the reason I'm mention, mentioning this is because they are dropping a tape. Uh, I think it's at the end of the month, end of June. Yeah, June 28th. Yeah, June 28th. And bandana. It, yeah, Bandana. F- fuck, forgot the name. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I would I would definitely peep uh, this tape before you peep Bandana. It just, it'll probably lead right into it and get you the feel of how they work together. Uh, so go peep it. Fucking super hyped for that, and you know, I think Bandit. I already think it's gonna be album of the year. Mad Libs a genius. Freddie Gibbs is insane. I could talk about this album for hours. I won't go crazy. Some of my favorite tracks are Harold's, Nick's, Uno, Shame, Thuggin, High, but literally every track I love. I could have wrote, written my own fucking segment on this album. <laughs> yeah, it's literally one of my personal favorites of all time for sure. Yeah, definitely love the album. All right, well, thank you guys so much for tuning in for the first episode of Furta Tunes. We hope to get nice and uh, crispier content for you guys in the following episodes to come. We'll be starting up our Prove Me Wrong segment in the next episodes and our top 10 segments. So, yeah, I just wanted to thank everyone for uh, tuning in to our first episode. Uh, if if you didn't like an opinion today, hey, let us know in the DM. We please do. love to get into those no, music some arguments. Some of these are man. facts, bro. You can't know. <laughs> <laughs> Don't even get John Marco started. Maybe, hopefully, on a good day, you'll get me. Juice Wyatt. World, bro. Juice. <laughs> all right, leave me alone, bro. Leave me alone. All right, all right, all right. We're uh, anyways. We're... Thanks everyone for listening. Tune in next week. For Cheers. Sure. Thanks so much. Thank Again, you. check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Social at, media. For sure. All of that. At Furtitunes with a Z. Regular updates on new episodes. And uh, take it easy, guys. Good. That's good. Let's fucking go, boys.